Discuss proportion as it relates to our first cylinders. Now, making your first cylinder, we wanted to decide on something kind of, you know, not too easy, but kind of easy. Um, remember, too, you know, this is a shape, and we're going to transform it into a form, right? So these lines that I make when I'm defining the shape are going to be important. Now, I want this to be a certain dryness as I approach doing this. It's it's really a quite a soft leather hard, or you might call it, you might call it... Um, dryish plastic or firm, firm, firm wet clay. So I'm just going to use this as my template um, to make my cylinder. Now, the two edges that come together, and I'll illustrate this further, if, if you can undercut them like this, it could be like this as well, then when you go to put this cylinder together, it will seam really, really nicely. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and across what would be considered the top of the cylinder, I'm just gonna cut a square line, meaning my knife is facing pretty much straight down. Here though, I'm gonna cut an angle. In other words, I'm undercutting this, right? See how my knife is angled. And I'm gonna try to remember that same angle by doing this one next and overcut this, right? So I'm following the edge of the template, but the knife is sloped outward from it. See, so there's that angle, right? And then this again is gonna be a square cut. Now you'll notice when I flip this upright that there's some texture on the outside of it. That's because I was showing um, a demonstration about how one can add texture to their form. See, I get it on its edge really quite quickly and then I start bending it around. And I talked about how in the texture video, if you if you put a deep texture, then it'll create a weakness in your slab. So you can see it might want to rip right there. Oh, it's wanting to fold under even. So I'm gently making this turn circle. All right, so you can see that I'm trying to get these edges that I've mitered, that I've done those angle cuts on, to come together to make a really nice seam. All right. So once you've got them kind of close, then what you want to do is just open this up slightly and you wanna slip and score both of those surfaces, okay? So these two surfaces that you have the angle cut on, you're gonna come out with your slip, and you're gonna get not a lot, just a nice thin coat. Remember, this slab should be a little bit wet already, right? Just dry enough to kind of stand up. Not too wet that it's falling, right? If it's falling, then it's too wet. But you want a little bit of slip on there to make sure that this seam will, will be successful. And you wanna come through here and really score this surface. And then once that's completed, you wanna coax this back around so that the seam is making contact with the other part. All right, and you almost want to overlap the outside a little bit further, right? So don't put it together perfect. Put it together a little overlapped so you can push some of that outside clay essentially over that seam, all right? And so there's a way to be firm here. If you notice, I'm touching with the length of my thumb. There's a way to be firm in doing this where you're not poking at it. Once, if you get to a point where you're making the seam thinner than the rest of the slab, then you're overworking the seam, all right? So you don't want to do that. The other thing to remember is, remember, you can take this and you can flip it over, all right? So you see how I'm gently pushing this seam, gently but firmly is the best way I can put it, together. And so you can see the seam, but it doesn't look like it's like, like not supposed to be there. All right. Then you also want to do the same thing on the inside. Okay. 
Okay, so in general, we've now created this nice kind of like crisp cylinder, all right? That's still wet enough for me to kind of move and manipulate, but not, not so dry that I can't still bend this clay, all right?